many of you are familiar with this famous artist? These pictures are of Demi Lovato. These were taken about eight years ago when her rise to fame had just started. Demi's um, movie Camp Rock and hit song La La Land had just came out, and she was making. She was on the top of the, her charts and was having a worldwide tour. And was having all this fame, fortune, everything that she had wanted. But Demi had a secret. Um, Demi had Demi was struggling with mental illness and self harm. It took an outburst on tour for her to finally get to finally have a family and friend intervention, and they decided that she needed rehabilitation and therapy that would change her life forever. Well, what is self-harm? Self-harm is the act of deliberately hurting your body, um, any surface of your body, and is a symptom of depression. Well, what is depression? Depression is a serious medical condition in which a person feels unimportant, hopeless, and is unable to live a normal life. Depression, as I said, causes self-harm, but can also cause many other mental disorders, uh, such as anorexia, bulimia, etc. Self-harm is often hidden by wearing layers of clothing to hide their scars. And, one of the, and two of the most commonly used phrases that people will say are, I'm fine, or I'm okay, when approached about a situation. However, self-harm, however, is not just cutting. It's, it can be burning, scratching, alcohol abuse, or drug abuse. Basically, anything that harms your body is considered self-harm. And sometimes, this can lead to the ultimate harm, uh, suicide. But why do people self-harm? People self-harm because they feel that they are unimportant and, feel, and see themselves as a burden to those who are willing to help. And since they feel that they are a burden, they often don't ask for help. And although they, really, they do want a stable ground and someone to, to help them, they cannot because they're too emotionally detached to be able to form a healthy relationship. However, there are ways to treat this, whether it be with medicine, therapy, or rehabilitation. However, not everyone deals with this the same way, so not all forms work for everybody. And if someone does not get the help that they need, it can lead them to live an unhappy life and to even commit suicide. Luckily for Demi, she was able to overcome this and get the help she needed. But little had I known that Demi's story would help me, um, would guide me in helping one of my friends who struggled through a similar issue. It was seventh grade when I met, oh, for privacy reasons, I gave my friend the name Stacy, and here's the story how I helped her through her battle. And so it was seventh grade when I met Stacy. She was what everyone classified, what society classified as emo. She wore head to toe, black, long sleeves, thin dark skinny jeans, and wore staff bracelets up and down her wrists. She was quiet and listened to the emo music. Around, we had a small group of friends that she was often quiet around, but for some reason, she decided to open up to me, and she would even laugh occasionally. I remember as Stacy and I got closer, she began to trust me more, and that trust led her to eventually reveal her secret, that she self-harmed herself. I vividly remember her pulling me aside and telling me, and, and, show, and rolling up her sleeves, and, take, and, move, and showing me the cuts up and down her wrist. Some that were fading and some that were new. All that had been hidden under the bracelets that she loved. Stacy and I had two classes together and we, had spent, we spent lunch together every day. In that, time, oh, in that time, we had what I called a therapy session. And she would talk to me about the issues that, were, that would occur at home and I would ask how her day went. She then revealed to me why she cut herself. She told me that she did it because she didn't think that she was pretty enough. She didn't think she was skinny enough. She saw herself as a broken mess and didn't think that there was any other way to cope with it. 
I took it upon myself then to take care of my friend and to check every day to see if she had any new cuts. Um, and I would know if she had hurt herself because Stacy would sometimes smile with our group, but often on her off days, she would look at me and would have her head low, and I knew that was my signal to go talk to her. Stacy had told me that she had issues at home as well. She said that her stepmom would verbally abuse her for not doing something correct. That caused her to feel a sense of worthlessness and felt that she was not only letting her stepmom down, but that she was letting everyone else and herself down. Whenever I would ask her why, why she would do it, she would just hang her head down and she wouldn't really respond. She always looked unsure whenever I would say, can I see them? And she, but of course, she would show me anyways. And she would cry and I would always tell her, hey, it's okay, I'll be here for you. Stacey and I had gotten closer that year. So, a couple, so of course, a couple of months later, when she got a boyfriend, I was very protective of her because I didn't want her getting hurt. And I was a little unsure about him because he seemed to go through the same issues she had. Um, but, but I never said anything to Stacy because she seemed happy with him. And that's all that we both really wanted was for her to be happy. So I just kept quiet. But of course, as most junior high relationships go, he broke up with her. Except this was especially hard for Stacy because not only has she just gotten broken up with, he took it a step further and spread a rumor about her to the school saying that she was an emo freak who cut his name into her wrists. This was probably the hardest time for Stacy and I because I not only was my friend her, harming herself more, it, it was a time that I didn't know what else to say except I'll be here for you, don't worry. And maybe, maybe that's what she just needed to hear. With, with the rest of our group, we worked together to get rid of the rumors and slowly but surely it did simmer down and we were able to get rid of it and we were able to get rid of that negativity that was her boyfriend. As the year passed and it was soon to be eighth grade, Stacy had begun to cut in places that she did not want me to know about. She began cutting on her legs and places and other places she was sure that I wouldn't check. But of course, she would come and tell me anyways because she felt guilty. It was only until the middle of eighth grade that I saw an improvement in Stacy's behavior. I began checking, I kept checking every day and and slowly the scars began to become more evident and there were less cuts. Stacy Stacy began to also remove the bracelets she wore. Well, instead of wearing the bracelets to hide her cuts, she began giving them as gifts to her friends. Stacy also had shared with me that she was able to get therapy that she needed by finally talking to her parents. And she attended this therapy for a few hours every week. She also shared that she was able to, she got invited to a church youth group and she had gone every week. With her support group of church, friends, and family, Stacy was able to become the person she always was but never thought herself to be. A beautiful person inside and out with people who truly loved and cared for her and only looked out for the best. Demi and Stacy are not the only people to, to suffer with self-harm. An estimated 2 million people in the U.S. struggle with self-harm. And 13% of those are teens between the ages of 11 and 16. The majority of those numbers include girls because, they are, because studies have said that they often feel the need to be closed off and don't want to speak about their issues. But, as I've said, there are ways to treat it. If you or a person you know are going, are struggling with self-harm, here's the way that you can treat this. Therapy. Whether or not you or the person who's struggling with self-harm want to admit it, you need to talk your, your emotions out. Therapy is the best way to relieve those repressed emotions that you're holding up inside. 
whether it be with an actual with, whether it be with an actual therapist or a friend, either way, it'll help you to, to get those emotions out and not feel so bad inside. Or you can be like Demi, and you can write inspirational words on your arms. That way, when you look down, you have something to make you smile throughout the day, and you know that you are good enough. Or you can be like Stacy and find your creative outlet. Put, that, put those emotions into a hobby. Like Stacy did, she made bracelets, and you could do any other form of that. Lastly, you should find a support group, people that love and care for you. Whether it be family, friends, or a significant other, find people you know you can count on, and that will catch you whenever you feel yourself falling back. I hope that this, uh, this talk urges you to seek help for yourself or a friend who is struggling with self-harm, because in the end, you are worth it and you aren't alone.